Hello friends, I am Dr. Avilash Nayak. In this video, I am going to talk about approaches to designing self-learning materials. While developing self-learning materials, writers use, writers follow different approaches. In this video, we shall be talking about three dominant approaches like tutorial in print, reflective action guide and problem-based learning. First of all, let us discuss tutorial in print. In this approach, learning objectives are well defined and the course materials, they seek to teach a well defined body of knowledge. The writer presents some form of input. It could be in the form of a text, diagram or case study and then sets an activity to help the learners understand the contents being taught. An ideal unit generally consists of carefully controlled sequences of input, activity and feedback. The self-learning materials, they simulate the presence of a teacher in the conventional classroom who gives some input and then asks a question or sets a task for the learners in the classroom. This approach is mostly used in the open and distance learning system. This approach is based on the following principles. Every learning outcome should have at least one activity. Learning outcomes should have several activities and learning outcomes should have a reasonable number of activities with smaller outcomes. Now let us discuss the next approach that is reflective action guide. This is a constructivist approach to materials design. Materials prepared on the principles of this approach they aim to support the learners in learning from their own experience that is learning at their own work and encourage them to learn by doing. In these materials we find broadly defined aims but there is no precise learning outcomes. Learners are given case studies, projects or tasks which require them to engage with the materials or others which may include with their peers or people working in the concerned fields. It encourages the learners to record and reflect on their own experience by keeping a learning journal mostly. The activities are open-ended, often being based on the learners own experiences. It is suitable for designing and developing print materials. The third approach that we shall be discussing that is the problem-based learning approach. In problem-based learning, what happens? The focus is on higher level learning skills such as critical thinking, problem solving skills and deep learning. Problem solving encourages self-directed learning as it requires the students to be responsible for their own learning with the teacher acting as a facilitator of learning. This is the highest mode of learning. Thank you very much for listening to the presentation with attention. Thank you.